Okay, so let's begin with a warm-up example. We want to find the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 7. Well, we have here a quadratic with a linear factor, a multiple of x. A natural first step would be to eliminate the linear factor by completing the squares. So let's see what happens once we complete the squares. This is a fairly easy one. So if you square x plus 2, you get x squared, check. 2x plus 2x, 4x, check, plus 4. But we have to have a 7, so of course 4 plus 3 is 7. And now this should look familiar. 1 over something squared plus a constant. Think of the derivative of arctan of x being 1 over x squared plus 1. So it's almost right. And we can make it right with a simple u substitution, not a trigonometric substitution. So we can replace x plus 2 by u. But if we make this substitution, then we'll have u squared plus 3, which is not good. We'd like to have u squared plus 1. Well, we could get rid of the 3 here. If out of squaring x plus 2, out of squaring this expression, we would come up with a 3. Well, of course, the root of 3 squared is 3, and this now is going to work. So both sides are equal, therefore they have the same differential. The differential of x plus 2, of course, is simply dx, as the derivative of x plus 2 is 1. The derivative of root 3 times u is simply root 3, as it is a constant multiple, times du. And now we can replace. We have a dx, which is simply root 3 du, over an x plus 2 squared. But if you square x plus 2, you get 3 u squared, plus, of course, 3. And now we can factor two things, the root 3 from the numerator and the 3 from the denominator. And we now have the right form. 1 over u squared plus 1, of course, is the derivative of arctangent of u. So we're done with the integration. We have to return the final answer back to a function of x. So we can isolate x. Uh, sorry, isolate u in terms of x if we simply divide by root 3 on both sides. And so as a function of x, u is x plus 2 over the square root of 3. And we can now replace. And so the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 7 is square root of 3 over 3 times the arctangent of u, which as a function of x is x plus 2 over the square root of 3. And of course, plus c. And so we're done. So a fairly straightforward integral. By completing the squares, we can make a simple u substitution and obtain a very simple integral. Now, what if, instead of having 1 over this quadratic, I have 1 over the square, <coughs> sorry, the square of this quadratic polynomial? Will the same simple substitution work? And the answer you can try is no. And then we have to make a trigonometric substitution. So let's do so. And again, this goes to show you how sensitive integration problems really are. Without the square, as in our previous example, we complete the squares, we make a simple u substitution, and we're essentially done in one line. With the square, the same sub does not work, and we have to make a trigonometric substitution. But the first step will be the same, and that will be completing the squares by eliminating the linear factor.
So we have now something squared plus a constant. So this should make you think of 1 plus tangent squared, or if you prefer, tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. So ultimately, we want x plus 2 to become a function of tangent. But now, if you only make the substitution, you're going to have here tangent squared plus 3, which is not secant squared. Tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. So you want to find a way to eliminate the 3 here. Well, if out of squaring x plus 2, you would obtain a factor of 3, then you could factor it out, and you would have tangent squared plus 1, which would be secant squared. Well, what squared is 3, of course, is root of 3. And this is a proper substitution, replacing x plus 2 by square root of 3 tangent of theta. And now let's evaluate this expression in terms of theta, and of course, dx. Let us first find the differential. Again, both sides are equal, so they have the same differential. The differential of x plus 2 is simply dx, as the derivative of x plus 2 is 1. And the differential of root of 3 tangent is root of 3 secant squared theta d theta, as, of course, the derivative of root of 3 tan of theta with respect to theta is root of 3 secant squared theta. Let us simplify now our quadratic polynomial. So x squared, or x plus 2 squared plus 3, will give us, so if we square x plus 2, we get 3 tangent squared plus 3. We can now factor the 3, and we have tangent squared plus 1, which is simply secant squared of theta. But we now have not just a quadratic polynomial, but the square of it, so let's square both sides. And so the square of our polynomial is, and if we square this, of course, we get 9 secant of the 4 of theta. And now we have everything. We have our dx in terms of theta, and we have our denominator in terms of theta as well. So we can replace. So dx root of 3 secant squared theta d theta. Over the square of our polynomial, which we know is 9 secant of the 4 theta. So now we have a trigonometric integral. We can simplify a little bit. We can factor out the constant multiple of root 3 over 9. And we have secant squared over secant to the 4. That is a 1 over secant squared. We can still do better. If you think of it, secant is 1 over cos. So secant squared is 1 over cos squared. So we have here 1 over 1 over cos squared. That is simply cos squared of theta. And now we have a very familiar trigonometric integral. A trig integral involving a single power of cosine, that power being even. So we have to use the half angle formula. Cos squared is 1 plus cos of 2 theta over 2. Let's factor the 1 half up front, again, as it is a constant multiple. 1 over 2 times 1 over 9 is 1 over 18, so root 3 over 18. And we're left with the integral of 1 plus cos 2 theta d theta. And again, this is a very simple integral, so root of 3 over 18. The integral of 1 is theta plus root of 3 over 18. And by the chain rule, the integral of cos of 2 theta is sine of 2 theta over 2.
plus of course C. And if you remember, now we have our antiderivative and we will want, as we have a indefinite integral, to give our answer back into a function of x. Now, and of course not just back into a function of x, but the simplest function possible. And here we'll want to have trig functions of not twice of theta, but of theta only. And so we'll use the following identity. And that is that sine of 2 theta is 2 times sine theta cos theta. And we have used this one in one of our previous examples. So we have then root of 3 over 18 theta. plus root of 3 over 18, 1 half, 1 half, and now we replace sine of 2 theta by 2 times sine of theta times cos of theta, plus of course c. We can cancel the 2 times the 1 half, and so now we have root of 3 over 18, theta plus root of 3 over 18 sine theta cos theta and of course plus c. In the end if we want we can factor both root of 3 over 18. And now the question is well how do we then go back from our function of theta to a function of x? Well we always have to go back to our original substitution, which was that x plus 2 was root of 3 times tan of theta. And if I isolate tangent of theta, I of course get x plus 2 divided by root of 3. So tan of theta is x plus 2 over root of 3. So let me rewrite this down here and ask how we can use this to simplify our answer into the simplest possible function of x. So again, tangent of theta equals x plus 2 over root of 3. And from this we want to construct a right triangle, and if you remember by definition tangent as the ratio of two sides is the opposite over the adjacent. And so we construct a right angle triangle where the angle at the base is theta. And so tangent of theta is the opposite, which is x plus 2, divided by the adjacent, and this is the adjacent being, of course, root of 3. And we can complete the triangle, find the hypotenuse using Pythagoras' theorem, as this squared plus this squared. So if you take x plus 2 squared plus root of 3 squared is plus 3, you will get x squared plus 4x plus 7. But that is, of course, the hypotenuse squared. And so the hypotenuse is the square root of this quadratic polynomial. And again, you can easily verify. If you square this, you get 3. If you square this, you get x squared plus 4x plus 4. But 4 plus 3 is 7. And so you get the square of this, which is x squared plus 4x plus 7. And now we have a complete right triangle. So from this triangle, we can easily find sine of theta and cos of theta. Now, unfortunately here, as we have a single theta, so not a trig function of theta, but just theta, the best we can do is take the arctangent, and so since tan of theta is x plus 2 over root 3, taking the arctan will give us that theta is the arctangent of x plus 2 over root 3. And at the same time, I will factor the root 3 over 18 from both terms. We have root 3 over 18, factor it out. Theta, as we have said, is the arctangent of x plus 2 over root 3.
plus, don't forget, we have factored the root 3 over 18, and so we're left with sine of theta times cos of theta, and then we evaluate both from the definition as the ratio of two sides from our complete right triangle. The sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, times the cos of theta, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And of course, finally, plus c. And then we can simplify a little further. If we multiply both of these, the square root goes away. And so our final answer, fully simplified, is root of 3 over 18 times the arctangent of x plus 2 over the square root of 3 plus, and now as a single fraction, square root of 3 times x plus 2 over the quadratic polynomial. And that's it.